week or so. Yeah, you know, they've been playing uh, Kuki now. Uh, they, they played Miro last week, and then they put Kuki in towards the end of uh, you know, one of their matches, and he started to play quite well. So we're seeing him here early in this match, uh, you know, going up against Shanghai. Seoul Dynasty, though, is one of two teams that has never 4 0'd uh, the Shanghai Dragons. So yeah, the Dragons Shanghai, have never failed to take at least a map they always get a game. from the Dynasty. But, uh, you know, uh, for the Dragons, right, uh, you know, they've struggled to take some maps off of some other opponents, so to consistently take maps off of Seoul is pretty impressive. Yeah, and again, we're seeing them now. The Dragons having transitioned to definitely more of an aggressive style with the, the entrance, especially of their, their Korean imports that have joined in now. I've seen Gegory and Fearless in that front line is, is creating opportunities for the Dragons to actually be much more of a proactive team. And, you know, that was in a meta as well in the last yep. stage where Dive was much more favored. Now, not so much. You need a pretty even balance between all of them. And Jaehong now will be coming back in, what, his second series of the stage back on Zenyatta? Yeah, I think it's like, a, I think this would be his third series. Okay. Uh, played Zen all last week. They played Miro in all their matches last week. As I will see how he fares going up against I know, some of the players on the Dragons. I will say, you know, that Fearless versus Kuki is going to be an interesting matchup. I think you can uh, make the argument that Fearless you know, doesn't get it, obviously, the support from the overall team, as uh, I know some of the tanks from Soul Dynasty have had, you know, in terms of the supports and the DPS kind of all in line. But I think Fearless as an individual player has played quite well. And his statistics have reflected that as well, Matt. Yep. If we look over uh, a, lo a lot of members of the Shanghai Dragons, Dia uh, has struggled in Widow head-to-head -head so far uh, throughout the entire season, but especially this stage as well. He has not been able to, you know, overcome a lot of the top Widows that he's gone up against. And I think Fleta will definitely be posing that challenge. That's a very interesting matchup to look at. Yeah, you expect Fleta to dominate the Widow battle. If Dia is able to hold his own, though, I think this could get a, a little bit closer than people expect as Shanghai. Uh, they'll play a pretty traditional defense here with the Arisa up on the high ground with the jump rat and the Widowmaker sitting behind the shield. It'll be a Brian Zarya with the double sniper combination here from Soul Dynasty. A lot of focus on keeping Jay Hong alive here for the Soul Dynasty. They need to get to the point and set up, force the Dragons to give up the high ground, and hence, of course, the advantage it offers. You already, you already have Zimba at 100 charge. They haven't even really really had to work for it, right? And, and he can just bombard this barrier quite effectively. Yeah, I mean, they, they bubbled they bubbled Kuki twice there, and he bubbled himself once, and he walks away with 100 charge. Now, you'd think that Wakid, Matt, wants to get across the point or through the hotel and behind the dragon to set up that sort of pick we often see Hanzo's getting, but this is a very direct approach from Soul Star. No one's really flanking, and Wakid is actually sort of sitting in his back line. Give up a tick here. That's one tick. Yeah, the dragon's yet to get to the point. Now they need to drop down. We're going to hear a riptide let off in a moment here from David. A little bit early. Yeah, I think they wanted to get Zumba with that tire because they know how charged up he is. Right now, the average energy is at 75%. So he's back here. Shoot a frame. Sorry, as said, it'll be Dia who takes out Flutter. So that's a good sign if you're a dragon. Spin. Yeah, with the ice up the sleeve, but he was definitely the scatter arrow inside the little corridor, man. He kind of bricks it, doesn't get anything done with it. Dia finds a second kill. And the dragons so far are holding up against his onslaught. Resurrect that, but to be very careful. Splitter going down now, so maybe pulling the res is 